72 billion. And that's what the Internet of Things market for the public sector is projected to be in the coming years. In this age of information, more and more people are turning to technology and data for solutions to improve their lives. Politicians use polls to predict outcomes of elections and city officials everywhere use data as a resource to gain much needed financial support to maintain internal programs and back new projects. Park and recreation agencies across the country rely on data for annual funding. Collection analysis and the distribution of data from each community offers critical proof for ongoing and new programming maintenance and even job creation. Recently, NRPA traveled to Boston to focus on the overwhelming influence of data as well as technological achievements that are changing how park and recreation agencies operate all over the world. Data is hugely important because it helps us make decisions. Decisions on when to open, what programs to offer, uh, who we're serving, what age we're serving, what population, and quite frankly, what people like to do. Can't argue with numbers, and that starts with the collection of data. Look, park and rec agencies are on the front lines for reducing crime, for natural disasters, for public health, and that all comes back to numbers and it's measurable. So the more that park and rec agencies can capture that information and then make a compelling case for funding, then they'll be the most successful. The process of gathering the right data is very labor intensive, takes a lot of time. And if you already have data, sifting through it can also take a very long time. Probably the most important step is to identify the questions you want to ask and the outcomes you'd like to have. Uh, before diving into the data itself. Firstly, you want to be very clear with your residents and your constituents about what the data is going to be used for before you even start collecting something. And that is incredibly important in that level of transparency that government should provide. So what these data collection technologies give us is a way to understand usage patterns and also strategies for, for, for reaching those communities and demonstrating value to them, potentially demonstrating it through a quantification of health benefits, through a way of integrating with existing social media platforms that the communities value. Largely don't get bogged down in the MOU, don't get bogged down in you know, uh, dissecting a project all the way through the end, just go out there and actually try something. And that is the best way to learn and the best way to sort of uh, build momentum for projects around innovation and data. When we're thinking about big data, we want to pause and talk about well, what do we mean? Right? We know that studying big data is looking at huge pools of data to try to find patterns. We as humans, and there's 7.3 or 7.4 billion of us, are drastically outnumbered on the internet by our stuff. Right? It's your car talking to another car, your watch talking to whatever. The internet of things and this idea that our stuff is connected gives us far greater insights to our cities and its systems than we ever had. When you think of business, it's all about numbers, it's all about metrics, it's all about delivering services, it's all about efficiency and how you do that. We can get a lot of data at an individual level, but getting the population scale level of how people are really using parks and how their bodies are responding, much mind how their minds are responding, um, we're limited at the moment by cost and that cost is going to keep going down as you know people like the people here keep making better and better improvements to these sensing technologies. Whenever we do some sort of an engagement uh, strategy where we're collecting data from people, we also want to understand what their values are so then we play that data back, it actually means something. Mm -hmm. And people are more likely to access it if it actually does relate somehow to what they care about. You know, one way to build capacity is to work with other regional and state partners who may have more capacity to do some of the data analysis or maybe collecting data across larger jurisdictions. Um, so I think that's one thing. Certainly partnerships are a really key aspect of it. The use of data in all public departments and public sector work is growing exponentially. Parks and Rec is no different. I think over the next five or six years we're going to see it explode. Uh, so to the extent possible, uh, departments need to be open to that change and see how they can use it. Uh, big changes will be in the technology that you physically find in parks 
and the other side will be the planning tools available to decision makers. I think we as an industry need to get up our game in telling our story better, whether that's through presentations, whether that's through video, whether that's through social media. I think we collectively need to continue to work on not just relying on our numbers, but relying on the people and the stories that those numbers represent. Thank you.